Hi, I'm Kirby with Augustine E-Bikes. And today I'm doing a video on changing a flat tire on a rear hub motor. I know it doesn't sound very sexy, but I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this. These rear hub motors are very heavy. I just got a flat yesterday. So I'm about to repair this flat. So I wanted to do a video because it's super important to realize that there is although it's still a bicycle, there's a significant difference between a regular rear wheel on a bicycle and a rear hub motor. So, and part of it is also that yesterday I got a comment from one of our viewers, which I'm going to read to you, and then I want to show you some things. And it's so important, and it's in the video, but I want to relay this to you. Had a flat tire, repaired it, put the tire back on, I left the bike alone for two hours, went back at it, and realized I had left the power on, the power onto the battery. I turned it off and then turned it back on, started to ride it, and the throttle just hesitated and spit out an error code of seven, disconnected all the plugs, unmounted the battery, and reconnected everything. Turned it on and still error code seven. You twist throttle and it hesitates, one of the very first things you want to do when you're, when you're changing a tire is unlike a regular bike, you have to disconnect it. You turn off your battery, you remove your battery, and you disconnect the motor. Um, so unfortunately for this individual who I'm still in touch with and we're trying to troubleshoot the problem, is he probably burned out a transistor in the controller. The motor's fine, but you've really, that's the one thing about changing a tire, you've got to disconnect this. So, in this video, I'm just going to move this over here. In this video, you'll see that one of the things I try and do to prevent flat tires is use one of these uh, inserts that you buy from a bike shop for about $12 for two of them. But they're very thin. So I got a flat yesterday from a thorn that penetrated both my, I have a brand new tire, and penetrated this. So what I'm doing in my next repair is I bought um, some garden hose, and I have cut it down the middle, and it's a polymer. It's a very different polymer, and it's about, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch thick, as you can see right here. And so I'm cutting this in half, so I have one for each, the both front and rear tire. But this is, this is like, um, it's bulletproof. So I'm putting this on the inside. You can, here's a nail that can barely, barely penetrate. And this cost me about $5 for six feet of it. I'm going to cut it in half. I cut this in half, and then I'm going to cut it once again in half. And because it's circular, it'll fit right inside the tire, and then I put the inner tube right inside, and then I've got this armor plating on the outside. So you, what you'll see in the video is using this, but I'm going to start using this because um, it takes time to um, disconnect the motor, put on the tire. But um, I hope this has some value for you because it is one of the things about riding a bike. You're going to get flat tires. There's a lot of stuff on the road. This is why I'm doing the video. I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe below. Thanks so much for watching all of our videos. So today I'll be changing my rear tire on my 1200 watt e-bike. I got a flat because my tire had worn down significantly over the 4,000 miles I put on it, as you can see. Your e-bike tires take a much bigger pounding than on a regular bike due to the extra weight and vibration. In order to remove the wheel, the first thing I have to do is disconnect the motor's wire connections to the controller. To do so, remove the battery, you've got to remove the battery, and depending on your connections, remove all connections from the controller related to your motor. Once that's disconnected, you can then remove your rear wheel. Make sure that all of the washers and lock washers are in the correct order. Now that I've removed the wheel, I'm going to remove the punctured inner tube. I'm going to put a new tire on the wheel, and I'm also going to insert a plastic protector to help prevent from future flats.
I've inflated the new inner tube so that it can conform to the tire and the plastic protector's form and will help prevent punctures when sealing the tire to the rim. Once the new tire and inner tube are installed, I'm going to inflate the tire to about half of its final pressure. I am now going to put the wheel back on the bike and make sure that the washers are in the correct position. The flat washers go on the inside of the frame, this is really important, and the lock washers secure the wheel from the outside of the frame, so really make sure you've got that correct. Once the wheel is secure and the bolts are tightened, reconnect the motor wires to the controller. Secure the battery and turn it on. Once you've checked that all of your connections are secure, throttle the motor to make sure that everything works. Once you make sure that everything's worked, problem solved. Today I'll be unboxing and installing the very powerful 1200 watt rear hub motor. First I want to make sure that all the parts are here. The SW900 LCD computer, the controller, throttle and pedal assist. And of course the motor and the wheel. In this case, this is a rear 29er wheel, identical in size to the 700C wheels found on many road bikes. The first thing I want to do is remove the tire and inner tube from the bike's existing wheel for use with the 1200 watt wheel. Now I'm going to mount the tire on the motorized wheel and install the inner tube. It's very important, make sure to partially inflate the inner tube prior to install to ensure a tight fit and prevent pinching when fitting the tire into the rim. Really important, I've blown more than a few inner tubes doing this. Once I've attached the tire, I want to make sure to secure the disc brake to the motor. When tightening the brake screws, do so in a slow increment and move to the screw directly opposite to the screw you just tightened to ensure an even fit. Once the brake is secure, it's time to place the wheel in the frame, making sure that the wheel is true and the brake fits evenly in the brake caliper. These are very fine kind of movements but it, you can do it without without much effort. It's very important that you have one washer on the inside. It's a normal washer on the inside of the frame. The lock washer and the mounting nut on the outside of the frame. If you get that wrong it will not work. Once I have firmly tightened the nut by hand, get it as tight as you can with your hand, I want to test the wheel is spinning freely and true and that the movement of the chain on the cassette is aligned. I don't want any kind of strange movement there because I need, I need to ensure that there's good shifting. Once I've done that, I firmly tighten both nuts with a wrench. Not too tight, you don't want to break the frame, but tight enough because these are powerful motors and you want to make sure they're really lodged on there. And then I'm ready to install the controller and the battery. Thanks for watching our video and I hope you watch the upcoming video on installing the controller and the battery for this bike. Meanwhile, you can watch our video on programming the SW900 LCD onboard computer and many other videos that we provided to you over the last years.